Good morning. You missed the last rain drizzle by about 10 minutes. When I came down here a few minutes ago, it was raining 10, 15 minutes ago. But look at that. That's how quickly it evaporates. Part of the sidewalk's dry already. You'll probably see it come and go during this morning stream. Okay, good morning everybody. Saturday morning. It's 8 o'clock on a Saturday. 8 o'clock on a Saturday. What have we got for the work today? As promised, <laughs> I said I'd get that block done within the month, within June. It's now July the 1st here in, uh, here in Tokyo. Oh, it's Canada Day, I guess. Is it July 1st? Is that what July 1st is? I'm supposed to be celebrating today. We're done. I got to finish last night. Last night, last night. It's done. It is, it's my anniversary. So what's the anniversary? We came in 86, 79, so it's 37 years now. As of later this afternoon, I'll have been in Japan to live 37 years. I came here on previous trips, sometimes three months at a time, but uh, when we moved here permanently, what turned out to be permanently, it was July 1st, 1986. Thirty-seven years ago. Now well over half of my life. Okay, you can see it doesn't it doesn't look really understandable here, and you can now see the extent of the crack, and it looks way worse than it is. Where is it? Somewhere around here. It looks way worse than it is because what you're seeing, the part you're seeing, as opened up here, is not actually open at the top of the block. As I said, Matsumura-san put two pieces together and in order to make it look good, what he must have done was he didn't actually butt them together. One or the other of them must have been shaped a bit like this. So he made it so that it butted together and it looked good, but actually there was a bit of a gap down at the bottom. So in places where I've carved out, it opens up. In places where we haven't carved out, you know, the top, This is smooth, imperceptible. I cannot feel anything here. And it's the same with all the dots and things in the design. Even here through this leaf, where are we? This leaf crosses the crack. Not sure if I can feel something or not. I don't think so. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. The proof will be in the printing, we'll see. If there are gaps left, I will shim them but I don't think that's going to be the case. This was not the way I wanted it to go, but... And the black thing you're seeing here, this is a discoloration in the wood. The carving goes through it properly. <coughs> it's a discoloration, but I don't believe it's functionally uh, different. And the stripe you see is pure, just color. There's nothing there at all, as with this one. So we'll see. In fact, we're about to find out. We are going to now print it. We're going to pull a proof print from it right now. You're about to see the black spread all over it. And today's job is this. I'm going to pull one or two test prints, proofs, just to see what it looks like. And then uh, if they look roughly okay, I will make the first color transfer. We'll do the red marker. We'll paste it down and we'll start carving the first color block. There are going to be four color, color blocks for this. One will be a gray block covering the entire printed surface. The second will be a similar gray block without the cats. The cats won't be white, but they will look a bit lighter than the other background color. Then a third block will be the dark areas on the leaves. I think I've got a copy of the original here. Hang on a sec. Not sure if it's here. Yes, here we are, here. This is uh, the original Hokusai sketch. And what we will do is some of the leaves will be darker and some will be not. If you look over the very left hand side you'll see some leaves with veins are dark and the perhaps underside of the same leaves is white. 
And then finally, the fourth color block will be spots for the left hand cat. Not quite sure how we're going to handle that, but whatever, we'll work something out when we get there. So to print this, it'll be uh, five impressions, it'll be six impressions. We'll first have to press the paper in the press, then the background will go on, then the key block, then the background tone, then the leaves, then the cat spots. And this is your last chance to see, I scanned it actually, I took it upstairs a few minutes ago and I took a scan of this, so I will have a record of what it looks like. But now it's time to black it up. Do I have paper, test paper? Do I have test paper? I didn't actually think of that, let's see. Yes, we have a couple of sheets here. Something else about today's plan, show and tell. As per the, the conversation and requests at the end of the last stream, when we were looking at those thins, we will today, as part of show and tell, we will make a thin. And we will make it from a chrysanthemum print. <laughs> Talk about living dangerously. And that'll take more than 15 minutes. So today's stream, once we get to 9 o'clock on a Saturday morning, remind me about this. And it won't take 30 minutes, but somewhere, whatever, 9, 10, something like that, we'll cut our normal work and we will move to the to the special show and tell today. Okay, let's do some nominal work. We'll make a thin chrysanthemums just because we can. Can we? Just because we can. Well, something else to report before I forget. Before I forget, before I forget. A batch of prints to open. And these are a bit special. You've never seen this before, I believe. You've never seen this design. Pull, something pull, something push. Do you recognize this? Did I show you this last week or not? I don't remember, but I now have a batch of prints on my desk here. It says Hamamatsu and this is a print from those blocks we have here for over from over a hundred years ago. Car blocks carved by the Tansei Do company back in around 1900. We don't know, 1900, 1905, 1910, somewhere around there. And these are printed by the young lady who is working with us upstairs, the young lady from Jinin in China. And she is coming along very well. She is coming along. And if you think this is easy at that scale, look at my thumb here. If you think a gradation like that is easy to do, to get nice and straight and to get the color all smooth, if you think this is easy, I got news for you. <laughs> She's done very, very well. They're not all identical. You know, we normally we do the thing, we flip Kubota-san's prints and we find that they're all identical. Hers are not identical, but look at that gradation up at the top. Give me a break. 
she has done very, very, very well. She did it violin style. I'm not so sure if I should tell you this. I've done this too sometimes. A professional, total professional like Kubota san would never, he would never admit to doing this. I guess I couldn't say he would never do this. He would never admit to doing this. You get a gradation on the block. And the problem is the gradation has to be a nice straight line on top of the print. Now for a little one like that, it's not so bad. But when you get a bigger, larger print, a Tokaido series or something, it's got to be a smooth gradation across the top of the print. Now the problem is human, human geology, not geology, um, the geometry of our body. Sorry about that. You know what, you get what I'm saying. If I want, if I want to make a curve, we can get away with a curve because that's the way geometry works. But you try making a straight line, it's a different story. Well, top to bottom, we can make it. <laughs> you get my point. You get my point, you get my point, you get my point. And what, so what she's done is instead of doing it, let's zoom out for a minute, instead of doing it like this, you know, straight back and forth across the block, the hint I gave her was that when she grabbed her brush to do the gradation, hook your finger over the edge of the block like this. Hold your hand in a way so that the brush is on the wood, your finger is hooked over the edge of the block, and boom, 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 your finger acts as a guide. This is the way I showed her how to do it. She tried it, whatever, and she came up with her own idea. She thought it was original. It's not. She came up with violin style. I went through there one day up there last week, and I caught her doing this, and she like quickly tried to hide it. Doesn't matter. Do whatever works. She's got her brush. She's got it in pigment. She gets the block up like this under her chin. And she went, you know, I can't exactly go how, how, how she was holding it. Looking down the length of the thing and holding her hand. Maybe she was also guiding on the edge of the wood. I don't know. So she, <laughs> she put the gradation on. And the joke is we call it violin style. You know, whatever. And she got it. They look great. They look great. They look great. Flyfish says he has a postcard of this print. I want to see that, very much so. And I want to see that because we don't have any original samples of what it was like. We tried to find something, and all we could find was the original Hoksa uh, Hiroshige design that was in one of his early books, not as a woodblock print. So if you do have a copy of the print made from these blocks, I very, 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 very much would like to see that later on, please. Flyfish for fun. Let me know, please. Can she do it cello style? No comment. <laughs> I refuse to answer on the grounds that I may tend to incriminate myself. All right, as you know, I'm postponing the moment here. I'm postponing. This is the, 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 the part of the process that we don't want to do. No going back. No going back. And there's an analogy here. I, again, I should, should say this or shouldn't say it, whatever. For each of us, when we are younger, there comes a moment where we have a specific thing we do and we can never go back. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> there's the before and after states that uh, this block is about to lose its virginity. <laughs> whatever. Are we ready? All together now. What do I need? I've got my baron. I've got some paper ready here. Let's do this thing. <laughs> got the wrong pad. I've got the slippery pad. I should have the non-slip pad here. Very, very dry piece of wood. Actually, we're, we're a little bit helped by the humidity here. It is very, 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 very moist here these days. So this will help actually printing a wood like this.
Oh, I've only got a really rough barren. No. I brought this down this morning, not for doing this job actually, but for doing the making the thins job later on. Got my priorities a little bit mixed up here. It'll do. We can print it, but uh, not as delicately as we li should like. Let's try and be gentle. So someone says the boxwood doesn't want to accept pigment. It doesn't. Boxwood doesn't. It's too hard. It's not a good material to use for traditional Japanese woodblock prints. It's not. It's not. It's not. Okay, how have we done? How much do these look like cats? What kind of fixing am I going to have to do? Let's have a look. Okay, a few things jumped to mind right away. The fur area here. Now we knew there's going to be a density issue. You can see the density here as a pull. Look at this in the tail. I've got to decide what to do. And my, my first guess here, without too much in investigation yet, I'm thinking there's places here where I have to get in with my knife and thin these out. Look at these. The lines here seem a bit too fat and in the tail there's so many so close together you end up getting a more a more dense appearance and we didn't see this in the sketch because it was all faint and gray so I'm gonna to have to play with that and it's not going to affect my work on the color separation today but before we pull the actual edition I've got to go through this thing and try and figure out how to handle the density there's also the question of the double whiskers. Remember, this cat had single whiskers. Where am I? Can't see the face. Here, this cat has single whiskers. This one had doubles. My first impression is I don't think this works. How about the teeth? How are we doing on the teeth? Well, we have teeth. I think this stuff needs a bit trimming here. There's a bit too many thick dark spots. Overall, we're okay. There's some, well, I don't know what that is. That's a, probably a muddy, oh no. It's a blob. Yeah. We have a print. We've still got work to do. Absolutely, we've still got work to do. There's things like this you can see. Where am I? Where's my finger? There's a couple of the strokes in the middle that are too fat, that don't balance. There's another one up here, too fat. So I'm going to have to go through this thing one by one by one by one by one. And what you see here, now look at this, this is another reason why we are definitely going to use color blocks on this. Can you imagine if we just print it like this, it's just a jumble. Your eye can't understand what's a flower, what's a leaf, what's a cat, we can't get it. But once we, uh, once we get some color tones in there, the different components will, will be visible. We'll see. We'll see. There's also somewhere along the line, I don't remember where, when I was doing the outline of the cats, one of these streams of um, dot, 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 dots, I attacked one of them. I chipped one of them. So it's got to be fixed. I don't know where it is. I can't see it. I can't remember where it was. I chipped a... Fr is that it there? I don't think so. I'm not sure. Oh, there it is, there it is, there it is, there it is, here. There we have it. Anyway, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's get going. Sit here and look at that. 
Oh, the seam, the seam. Yeah, you're asking about the seam. Well, as I said before, I don't think we're going to see the seam at all. I don't even think about it. It runs through here, it runs right through there. I don't, don't think we can see it somewhere around where my finger is. I think the seam isn't a problem. Now it's dried. I should have just taken three or four copies first. Now. Oh, Ishikawa-san! Hi, kami dashimashite yo. Just mite kudasai. Kore. Ima hajimete no. Ah, so ka. This is Ishikawa-san. She's printing upstairs. Kyo wa. Here's here's the cameras over here. So so so. Ima kono kyo no shigoto. Eh, ano GJ. Ah, GJ. She's doing the number 12 print, the bamboo grove on the one we call the GJ. <laughs> Ghibli series. Don't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> she brought a good present yesterday. Ishikawa-san came back. She took a week's vacation or so. Oh. One week to show. Mm. And we thought she was going up there. Her family has a house in Nagano or somewhere. I thought you were going to Nagano. <laughs> she comes back last week yesterday with presents. She gave us all some cashew nuts and some tea. Where did she go? <laughs> so, where did she go? <laughs> so, so, so. <laughs> she brought us all packs of cashew nuts and tea. So, so, has anybody, I don't know. Yes, John's got it. <laughs> Sri Lanka. Yes. So, 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 so. <laughs> Dave here, what he sees says, he says he went to Ceylon. That tells you how old I am. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what do you mean, Sugoi? <laughs> She's surprised that you got this. Why? Uh, they're too young. They're too young. They're too young. I'm 71. John is not 71, but John, John, John is whatever. John's about your age, I guess. So that that generation, we learned geography in school. And like I said, for me, it was Ceylon, and I have to remember it's Sri Lanka. But yeah, nuts and tea and stuff, South India. Yeah. So I'm sorry, she's constantly speaking part of Japanese here. So she brought these things in for some of the staff, and they had no idea where this was and she said I went to Sri Lanka and they're like where yeah those are different guests and it could have been like for example a Burma uh, Myanmar mm -hmm. Thailand mm -hmm. it could have been different ah, countries so, so. like this so, yeah, so, so. so so cashews Sri Lanka tea yeah why did you choose there why did you go there yeah それであそこシギリアロックっていうところ壁画があるんですね。ごめん、シギリアロック、シギリアって場所にあ、スリランカの中の。シギリアって場所ってその上にシギリアロックごめん、何語シリランカ語シギリア。あ、シギリアっていう
I shouldn't have said, you know, young people don't get it. Sorry. She's doing such good work for us, you know. My God, she's doing such good work for us. She's very slow, but nobody cares. It doesn't matter. She's not here to break world records or to, or to earn a ton of money. She's getting paid well, but that's not her motivation at all. At her age, her family, her husband's had a good job. They're, they're fine for money. She's not in this to, to build a bank account. She's in this to... I, I chatted with her about this the other day, and she misunderstood what I was trying to say, you know. Like, why are you doing this? It's such hard work. She was staying late, different days. She's like late, eight, nine o'clock. Her husband's, what's going on, you know? Why are you doing this? And she wants to kick ass. Not as in kick somebody's ass. The expression, it's, it's become an expression. I just want to do something and do it so well. You know, I mean, this is, this is I think, the motivation for pretty much all of us here, you know. It's X percent ego, maybe 99% ego, I don't really know. Just to be able to do something just so well. And the harder the job is, the better that feeling is when you get there, you know. So, so if you misunderstand the expression, I'm sorry. It's not meant in terms of being competitive or hurting other people or whatever. I think it's an understandable expression. I just want to kick ass! I think it's okay whether it's something that should be a sin, <laughs> like pride and whatever else, all those things, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. If you know, you know. And we're lucky because it's not a sport, it's not competitive, so there's no negative about this. We're not pushing other people down, you know, because we're just doing it on our own. Okay, here we are. I put way too much the water. You saw me put water on this thing to try and revive the block. And this example is going to be a perfect example of how difficult this is going to be to print. I paused to chat with her for about one minute. And in order to get the block printable back, I put water, 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 try to get a mix. And look at this. All the lines have thickened up and thickened up when we get black blobs everywhere. The only way to print on boxwood is to keep an absolute minimum of liquid and ink and stuff on the surface of the wood. But because of that, if you pause for a split second, you're toast. It's nothing like printing on cherry. So we all know, anybody's printing one of these things upstairs. No phone calls, no nothing. They go to the toilet before they start. They just get going. Here we go. I'm going to do another one straight away. And this is what it's like. It's go, go, go. You're never going to see me stream one of these key blocks. Not in a million years. And there we are. Look at that. Just after three. There we go. Look. There it is with too much pigment, there it is with a better amount. You can see what happens. The whole density thing is dramatically, dramatically changed. Try to get the same, same area here to show. Look, super dense, useless, getting closer. And that's the way you got to do it. You get your pigment on a tile. Get your pigment on the tile. Go, 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 go. And just, just find your balance. And don't let anything interrupt you. Oh, okay. Oh, no, I need my transfer sheets. I'm ready, 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 ready. Where's my transfer sheets? Today's work. My God, talk, talk, talk. Today's work. Today's work. We might have it just about right. Did I stop for too much there? Pigment onto the top. Just pick up what you think you need. This is not ideal for transferring because the yellow paper is quite thick. The 
I've got to press a little bit more heavier than I would like to. Don't stop, don't talk, don't look, just go, 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 go. Nice print. You know, this is going to be a nice one. I am happy. This is closer now to what it might look like. Gotta cut the tail way down. Okay, let's put it away and start tracing. Not tracing, but drawing. I forgot this morning I should have gone up to the convenience store and I should have printed out a sheet with those leaves on it so that I can see for a reference. But I didn't do that. I forgot this morning. Alright, how's the time? 8.32. Okay, let's do this. I have a copy here of the image. This is the British Museum copy and that's my reference here and what we'll do is let's grab one of these sheets and do it for the leaves to look up and look down and look up and look down. It can't be helped. <coughs> the only printer we have here at Mokonka, we, we have a laser printer for the invoices and stuff that we need, you know, the shipping list. We've got to print out. The post office sends us the label data for packages. So we need a printer in-house to print out the label data for packages. But uh, just his printers are just trouble. They're nothing, 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 nothing but trouble. For, so for good work, for delicate work, for color work, for anything that needs just nice printing, we just use a convenience store. I put the thing on a USB stick, go down there and print it out. And there's no maintenance, no expense, no nothing. It costs next to nothing to do it. We don't have to worry about do we have toner, do we have ink, do we have anything. Will there be white area on the print or will all have gray? No, I'll tell you again. I, I said before, but let's do it again. There, is going to, there are going to be four color blocks that go with this. One color block will cover the entire surface of the print inside the border lines. And it'll be printed in a very light gray. And the only place you'll be able to tell that it's there is when you compare it with the outside. But it won't be bright white, dark gray. It'll be a silver. It'll come out like a light, light silver color. That'll be the background. And that will end up being on the background, on the cats. The only place you'll see it is on the cats and on the reverse side of the leaves. 
Block number two will be the same thing, the full area, but it will have the cat bodies cut out of it. And when I say the cat bodies, I'm not sure yet about the feet and stuff like that, but it will, and the eyes, it will have the cats cut out of it. So that will give you in the finished print a bit of a different tone. The cats will be lighter and more forward than the back. They're not going to look white, bright white, but they will be lighter. Block number three then will be the one I'm going to do right now. It'll be the dark leaves that you see in the picture at the top left of your screen. And then block number four, it could go on the same block as number three, but I'm going to keep it on block number four so that we can play with the levels. It's going to be the to color toning and the patches on the left hand cat. So that's the plan so far. There will be small details I haven't figured out yet. Some of these stems, which block do they come off and which block do they go on. We'll take care of that when I get to it. Someone says, bring it up on the iPad. That would be kind of a cool idea if I had an iPad here in the room. I don't. It's, it's somewhere. Somebody has walked off with it to use it for something else. Good suggestion. Thank you very much. Not actually going to work <laughs> right now. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, let's get to this. Let's do some. Oh! Another, another small problem. My glasses. My glasses to see this are upstairs. So there's no way around it. I do have to go upstairs to get my glasses. So I'll be back in one sec. I have a mic. This will give us a good test. What I'm upstairs in my room upstairs, will the mic still connect? Who knows? Back in one minute. If I can find my glasses. Tell you what, I'll, I'll, I'll report where I am so we can see where the Wi-Fi actually works. Let's give this a try. Heading outside. Now outside, heading upstairs. Halfway upstairs, going into the old shop on the second floor. Glasses case. There it is. Back in the stairs. It's dry. So how did our mic work? What did I report? Going to staircase, top of the staircase, in my room, looking for glasses. Did we hear all that? I don't know. Someone says, yes, they're a bit surprised. We, uh, we have to leave the building to go upstairs. Originally, when this thing was, was structured, it was one business. It was a restaurant called uh, Noguchi Shokudo. And it was, there was more than one building. This building and the one behind it, and I guess the one to the side, I'm not quite sure, were all the same restaurant. Uh, the front door would have been here, and people would have come in the door where I am, and they could have either moved into the first floor here, or they could have immediately, after coming in, gone up the stairs. The stairs didn't come in from outside. The stairs came in from this room behind me. This room wasn't here. This wasn't here. The first floor was open, and the stairs went upstairs from here, not straight up, they went up as a curve. 
Partway along in the history of the building, they decided to rent it out separately upstairs. So they built this barrier here and they changed the direction of the stairs to enter from outdoors. So they could rent the first floor by itself and they could rent the upstairs as something separate. And we actually, we would really, really like to change this, to put it back to the original structure. But it's kind of a big deal. It means we're removing this entire wall, uh, concreting out the part of the stairs that has been fixed, building new concrete stairs that would curve around, redoing the whole front door. For the moment, we're just leaving it. A little bit of choppiness on the second floor. It's funny too because the second floor I was directly above where I am sitting right now and the window is open so the, the Wi-Fi should have perhaps been able to connect more through the open air outside than through the inside of the building. It's pretty thick concrete floors in this building. So. Okay, okay, okay. Man, oh man, get some work done, Dave. Just nothing but distractions. And now the problem, of course, if I see this, I can't see the one on in front of me, so... God. Whatever, let's do a bit of this. There's going to be a million opportunities for error here, as you can see. What's leaf, what's in between leaf, what's outside. There's going to be huge opportunity for error. I think what I said was I'm going to color this today, paste it down and start carving. But now that I think about it, you know, that's actually not going to happen. Because this needs much more careful testing. So I'm going to start coloring this. And if I move on f far enough, then you guys can help me try and sort out what I might have missed. But I'm going to in get some help, other people, to check it for me before I paste it down and start carving. There's too, too many opportunities for error here. Common sense. See, look at this one, this little one here. Choop, choop. Should we zoom in a bit more? As long as I keep it here, we're okay, kind of.
Someone's asked about swimming. Am I still beating the lady swimming with a chicken sandwich diet? Well, two things are happening. I don't think it's a diet, but am I still eating those chicken sandwiches every day? Yes. And am I still beating her at swimming? Monday, she didn't show. She's never there Mondays. Monday, I have the lane to myself. Tuesday, she did pass me once, and it's because of the way we started. When I got to the edge of the lap, she was at the other end. So rather than wait for her to get to me, I jumped in. And because of that, so she had a half a lap head start on me, she passed me once, just about halfway through. That was Tuesday. Wednesday and Thursday, bang, bang. I waited till she got there, she turned, I jumped in behind her, so she took her 40 laps to catch me. She didn't pass me th Wednesday or Thursday. And Friday the pool was closed. The last day of the month, it's always closed for deep cleaning. So yeah, I'm doing okay. It seems I'm doing okay. I have no idea what this has to do with chicken sandwiches, but I'm just going to stick with it for a while. And I will be forced to change the plan soon anyway, because 7-Eleven is 7-Eleven, and they never, ever, ever keep the same thing on the menu. Add infinitum. They added a new one yesterday. I got a new salad from 7-Eleven. And actually, maybe you can help me explain what's going on here. It was called Romi Samon Salad. And it was in, it's in the Japanese phonetic alphabet. Domi. Domi Salmon Salad. And it had a logo mark on it. And the logo mark, I've got to pop this back. The salad said in katakana, Domi Samon Sarada. And it had a logo mark, a circle. And the circle mark was this. I can't really do this myself. It had fingers down and it had a thumb up and a little finger up. I can't actually really do that myself, but whatever. It had something like this. The mark was, you know, you know the mark, you know the mark. And it said in Japanese, approved by the Hawaiian Tourist Board. And it was called, no, it was called Domi Sa Samon Salad. So we looked it up. We're sitting there eating lunch and we got our Googles out. Domi, not Domi, just Domi. Domi, Domi, Domi. Anyway, whatever, it seemed that it's something to do with, with Hawaiian food. Domi Salmon. So then we're chatting about this and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm from Canada. We have like salmon all over the place in Canada. You know, they fight up the mountain streams and whatever. We have salmon here in Hokkaido fighting up the mountain streams. Do they have salmon in Hawaii? Yeah, no, I know it's not the devil's sign. It's a Hawaiian, it's, it's a thing to show surfers and whatever, whatever. But do they have salmon in Hawaii? So, if somebody's asking, does salmon fight the way up the lava flows? It's a serious question. I do not know the answer. I get Hokkaido, I get Canada. Do they have salmon in Hawaii? So, how can a specific salmon dish become a Hawaiian thing? Or what am I missing? Anyway, it was extremely tasty. Olive oil and... Uh, salmon chunks and a fresh raw onion and if they've got it again today i am going to eat it again today and this is the way it goes with 7-eleven they put these new things out all the time and just when you get to be liking them they disappear doing <clears throat> because yeah I guess I don't actually eat enough fish you know I don't go out for sushi I gotta 
So in my in my diet there probably isn't enough fish. So that this was there, it's uh, probably good for me, I guess. Someone says they were at 7-Eleven this morning already. We checked myself. They might not be there in the morning. This is one of the dishes in what they call their uh, their deli something series. Deli, I think I forget the name of the series. It's deli salad series or something like that. And it may not be there all day. They bring these things out at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning and they're, they're designed for lunch. And they've got a new whole counter of this thing. Deli salad or deli something, I forget. Someone says, you missed a spot on the top leaf. The white chunk is too big on yours. Yeah, I see your point. It's just the part where it flips at the back. Okay, I'm with you. I'm with you. Thank you. You're talking about this part. That's the front. And then it flips over to the back side. Um, that's why we're doing this together. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All help appreciated. Speak up. And also, I've been remiss. I'm sorry. Somebody helped me find a mistake there, and I didn't even pass out a chocolate egg. I'm sorry. My apologies. You know, I've, I've, uh, I'm not taking care of business very well here. I guess, in my mind, the chocolate eggs are just sitting there on the table, and people take them as they've earned them. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> my apologies, sir. <laughs> chocolate eggs for everybody. Or I could walk into a restaurant and say, chocolate eggs for everybody, and then I could walk out, you know. Somebody start explaining Romeo, are you? Okay, thank you. I'll read this later, very much. I'll read this. Sounds like lots of conversation going on here. Okay, thank you. Thanks for the contributions, everybody. Top center leaf, the part at seven o'clock looks quite different. Top center leaf, you're talking about this big one here? Top center. Oh, you know, I think you're talking about this one and you're talking about the edge. And I think that's just the carelessness. Uh, you mean, he's, he's got a little bit of a gray on the edge here. No, they're colored or they're not. I don't think we're doing any tones on this. You mean the part just above the cat, right? This one, two, three. No, I'm going to go with that as a solid piece. They were coloring in with a very, 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 very delicate brush. Okay, Dave, keep going, keep going.
Someone says, I don't think the gap looks very natural. Not quite sure where we're talking about there. Gap, gap, gap. Again, don't panic on these things. If you can help me find things, that's fine, but don't panic. We are not going to paste this down right now. Absolutely. I am going to get uh, third party help and double checking on all of this here this morning before pasting this down. And what I'm mostly going to get help in, I'm going to need some advice on what to do with the stems to help differentiate these. So help me where you can here, but don't worry, we're not moving ahead yet with this this morning. white specks in here. What are those all about? Hey, what's going on down here? Just in this area, there's two little white spots in there on the original. I don't see those. Either I bollocks that in tracing or what? I don't know. I think I get one of them. This leaf must be coming down here. And this leaf must be coming up. And there's a leaf here. about that triangle. I'm going to call it red. It looks funny. And then we're going to leave those. No, that's a leaf. Look, this leaf here comes out. That's leaf. Absolutely, that's leaf. Someone's saying it's my difference on the key block, I think. So we'll go, I think, with what makes sense here. I may have misinterpreted it when I was doing the key line tracing. Very, very possible. <coughs> okay, have we got it all? Have we got it all? Someone say more leaf after the tail. Okay, a couple things. Someone saying the upper left leaf. The upper left leaf does have a white spot on it. That's on the original. It's the back side of the leaf showing through. There's a bit missing from the key block here. We know under the cat belly on the right, this area here to show, this I don't believe is leaf. Let's pop up the original a bit larger here. There is something in there, isn't there? There's stem and there's something that looks a bit like leaf. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. I'll go with you on that. It looks a little bit like a leaf. And then also up here. There's an area here. Oh, 
Oh, I know, the upper left leaf. That's what you're talking about. You're talking about this zone here. Look at this. So I've missed a line on the key block, and that's confusing me. All right, I got you. I see it. I see it. I see it. Thank you. We're talking about this. There's a line missing here. So I drew it wrong. What shall we do? What shall we do? Look at that. Right, right here to show. I can imagine somebody out there yelling and screaming at the screen. Dave doesn't get it. Hit the ejector seat button. Dave doesn't get it. <laughs> but I told you I'm not pasting it down this morning. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Any more big ones? Any more big ones? Yeah, for sure. Chocolate egg for sure on this one. <laughs> I don't know who gets it. But <laughs> Okay, okay. Now, how about another one? How about this place here? That looks awfully leafy to me. Indeterminate on the original, but I think this is going to get included. That looks awfully leafy. I can imagine the people screaming at this screen. <laughs> sorry for the stress, guys. Gang, sorry. Any more big ones? Under the cat's tail, a small area. Under the cat's tail. Like, you can be a bit more helpful than that, I think. Under the cat's tail. Well, there's nothing under this one. So let's go for the right-hand side cat. I did leave a white spot there, and I'm, I'm going to leave that. One missing is wrong in the original, the bottom of the bigger leaf on the right. Bigger leaf on the right could mean this, it could mean this. I think what we've got here is logical. I think we have, this is from this leaf and that's from the background, I believe. That, I'm just going to fly with it. I think it's okay. We could go either way and nobody on the world would ever know. This looks good. There's a little area here, but these are the flowers, I think. There's white space behind. I think we have got this here. I think we've got this. Two white spots under the tail. I said we've covered this because mine is different from the original. Within the loop of the tail curve, we have a white spot. They've covered in black. Nay. I'm thinking we have two things here. We have Yeah, this one, this triangle to show. That's clearly red on the original. Let's go with this. Let's go with this. Let's put that in. Then beside that, we have white background, and we have white from the leaf on the other side of the tail. I think that's a better decision. I don't know who called that. Thank you. Let's do that. Okay. Can we all relax now? I think we're okay. I think we're okay. <laughs> there is somebody still screaming at me. Under the right cat's throat. I am looking back and forth here. Looking back and forth. So 
someone says true under the right cat's throat. What are you seeing that I aren't seeing here? What are you seeing? Are you guys on this? I do not see anything that I'm missing here. What, 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 what? Oh, I see. Are you, is it this you're talking about? This little thing here? Who's here? Who's here? Oh, Sadako-san. What time is it? 9.06. You get earlier every week. Good morning, good morning. Same train, so good. All right, somebody's got it. Okay, yes, 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 yes. Group coloring exercise. All right, I think we are good to go. Later this morning, Sadako is going to go over this and help me with this. I think we are good to go. Okay, let's change gears. It's early for show and tell, but it's not too early for playing with that experiment we were going to do. Let's change gears now over to our show and tell experimentation today. That was one of the most stressful things I've done in weeks. Pull, push, pull, push. Okay, we're going to need a big wide space on bench here. Oh, okay, I've got to go get a block. One sec. Okay, here's how this is going to roll. To bring up to date very quickly, those of you who weren't here the other day, I showed some very thin prints. Prints that at first glance seem to be almost impossible. They are printed on a paper that is stunningly thin, certainly way too thin to put on a block and rub <coughs> and do our normal printing with. I showed 10 of these prints or so. There was some confusion about how they were made and it's going to be just a lot more fun rather than explain how they were made just to do it now with another new print. A couple of things. What you're about to see is experimental. It may work, it may not. Those came up pretty well because they're pretty small. We are now going to try this with a print larger than I've ever tried to do this before. With, and that's in quotation marks. <laughs> Here's the block I used to print the scent of chrysanthemums, the damaged block that's no longer being used, so it doesn't matter anymore. We're going to use the back side of it. Let me find a focus point here so you can see the whole surface. Here's what we're going to do. We are going to select a sacrificial victim. I have a bunch of prints from the run that I made when I made this print years and years and years ago. We had a bunch of prints left over that really are not so suitable for sending out. You know, the ones that are no good. So we've got a print here. Look at this. Before everybody gets upset about what I'm about to do, potentially destroying a print, we have a print here that's got marks in the sky. It's got red marks here. Dave got a little bit red here. It's got uh, bad spots. So this is a sacrificial print. It wasn't good enough to be sold. And it's now, if all goes well, it's going to be turned into a thin. 
here's how we're going to put in push out my god i cannot goddamn get that figured out here we go Someone's here, they've seen the documentary on a Delta flight. Yes, that must be quite a wise back. That was playing before the pandemic. It would have been 27, 2018, somewhere around there. Step one, moisten the piece of wood. Step two, our patented honey. Not honey. How much to put on? This is experience. About yay much. I gotta get good coverage. If I miss a spot, we are going to be in terrible, terrible trouble. Maybe not quite enough in a couple of spots here. Looking at the light reflections, we've got good coverage everywhere, I believe. Bit of garbage on the block there, get rid of that. And our print is now going to go face down. Remembering back to when I did this years ago, I remember now actually, one of the most difficult parts of this is the next part of the peel, the peel where there is pigment areas and areas where there's no pigment. <clears throat> the paper is going to separate fairly easily in areas where there is pigment. But in areas where there's nothing printed, it's going to be a bit more recalcitrant and we'll see. Let's see how this goes.
for those of you expecting an Olympic peel, it's not going to be half talking to these people. You know, we do this peel where we pull it off in one piece. That's not going to be that kind of peel. Have you seen this before? Is that a good? about the mess here. You know we made the scroll print, remember? After making the scroll, peeling off the paper on the back. I didn't see that process. No, because the guy in China did it. We sent them over to China. He peeled them off the oh. show. Are they cheering? I don't know. They're watching you watching me. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Come in. This is the difficult part. Up here where there's no yeah, where there's no color printed. The paper behaves completely differently. Thank you, thank you. You can see it's leaving behind more threads here. Once we get to that corner, it'll be okay. It'll, it'll just come off now. Here we go. Look at this. We are doing okay. It's getting awfully thin here. I don't know. It's awfully thin there. I have no idea. We may have taken this too far. Yeah, look, yeah. look. We've got. Oh, we've we've lost it. <laughs> we came this way. Can I move the block it's under the yeah. camera? We've lost it. We've got it here. It took off too much at the head here. Nanda, we came that far. <laughs> oh, there. It is. We've lost the head. There's no going back. Nothing I can do. I can't go back and put it on. Oh, look at this. Almost. Almost there. We've lost the head. <laughs> it's all good until it wasn't. Oh well. Okay, let's anyway, let's continue. Let's continue. <laughs> Thanks for the help there. Sekaku. Oh, I thought we were going to have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Okay, next step. <laughs> Win some, lose some. Next step now. I, I can't read the comments. People are cheering and booing and cheering and booing, whatever. Oops. Just a quick cube. Water, please. Thank you very much. My beautiful young assistant will go and get some water. Why would that have peeled off there? A couple of things. Maybe the glue, why would that have been? Maybe there was too much glue at that point. It went into the paper. I don't know. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Too much overconfidence at the end there. I was thinking we had it. It's like the Olympic guy who's running the marathon, you know, he thinks he's got it. And then like a hundred meters before the end, he starts to slow down and says, I got this, I got this. And six guys pass him in the last few seconds, you know. We now wait a couple of minutes, of course. So Vivid kp has got it. You said the paper behaves differently when there is pigment or not. And you can see the area where there was no pigment, you saw me, it wasn't 
breaking and I had to peel it by hand and add more and add more. And over here where there was more layers, it's three, four, five layers of pigment, it came off too easily. And maybe it would have been better if I had started in this corner. It might have been better, peeled it off from here and the rest of it could have been easy. That might have been the mistake there. Okay, what do I need now? I need a little bit of a plastic ruler to help me here. And I also need a support because this leftover paper now is thin. Thin as in T-H-I-N, thin. You've never seen anything like this. And I, if I tried to pick it up, a wet piece of paper, if I just tried to pick it up now, it would just dissolve in chaos. We might be okay. Let's see if I can do this. Are we on camera? Yeah. Actually, I think we're okay. And now that we've got an extra pair of hands here, sort of, this is going to be great. I'm going to pick this up. Okay. And what I would like you to do, if you can just take the block, after I'm finished, if you can take the block away. And I'm going to put the print onto this sheet of plastic. So, you want to wait, wait till I'm going to have off she comes. Well, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. There's our torn corner, can't be helped, part we lost. Up she comes, thank you. You can breathe again. <laughs> She's stopped breathing there for a while. <laughs> well, if only we hadn't spoiled that corner. Haunt any if only we hadn't spoiled the corner. All right, the rest of it, you know, it's just simply going to have to dry. When I was doing this back in Ome, at this point, I take the sheet of paper and I just put it on the fridge door. Just, you know, take it to the fridge, it hangs by itself, put it in the fridge door and it dries. Now this is going to take a while. It's going to take 10, 15 minutes to dry. We don't have that much time. So what I did do, I said at the beginning of this stream that I haven't done this with such a large print before. That's not true because I did one at six o'clock this morning. I did this already once this morning as a test because I <laughs> yeah. we've got one and it dried out. I don't have a fridge door here, but it dried out this morning. And here we have the same thing. I didn't trick you. I just wanted, I knew there's no time to dry this. So here's, actually, if we can just park it on the side here. Thank you. Here's the one done about two hours ago. And this one actually worked in that area and it didn't work in this area because it didn't peel away. You can see the thing at the back. I got, uh, I got paper scraps on the back. That's why I was so careful of this one. And it didn't get the hair. So here is one that did work. Here is a print on this super, super, super. So it's the cooking show, right? Exactly. Like on the cooking program when they do this. They show the cooking, cooking, cooking and put it in the oven. You can't stand there for two hours while the audience is watching. So you pull out the one that you made before the show started. <laughs> it's exactly the same. <laughs> I'm not pranking you. And here it is. Sure, it's just incredible. Here, pick, pick it up and hold it, no problem. They can see what you're doing. It's just, I can't describe what it is in words. They are just so cool to touch and to, to feel. It's one of the most glorious objects I've ever felt. And to think that I made this, I carved it, I printed this. Isn't that so, what's the word? Amazing. But what's the word, the feeling, you know, just... Precious object. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you say, the piece of paper. Just I, know, piece of I paper. know, I know, but it's true. Both things are true. It's just a piece of paper with pigments flashing on it. James Michener did this. You know, he was enraptured by Japanese prints for all his life. He was just, that's the only word, enraptured. James Michener, he's, he's long gone now. He just couldn't believe it. And he didn't make them himself. His, he was a wordsmith, so he wrote novels, wrote books, and he used his money to sponsor printmakers, all kinds of stuff. And he was enraptured. He said the same thing, you know, there's a paradox here. It's just a scrap of paper with some pigments on it. 
all over the world, cultures all over the world have the same sort of stuff, scraps of paper with color. But yet something about these Japanese prints, especially when you, when you, when you hold it and touch it, and you know, you, I want to eat these things. It's just something you want to own and take into your body, you know. The only thing my regret is, if, can you imagine if I had designed this? No, I didn't. This is a design from Kaj to Hanko from 1895. I cut the piece of wood, I printed it, and now I played with it to make this result. But how would I feel if I had actually designed that thing from zero? If I had drawn a picture of Sadako or something, you know, a beautiful woman picture or something, the, the, it would, my head would explode. It would just be too much. Too much for one person to, to, to accomplish, you know. This is fine. I get my pleasure. This is absolutely fine. And over the next few minutes, that one is going to dry. It won't take long. That paper is so thin. <clears throat> and this room, even though it's a damp day today, we've got the air conditioner in. That paper is so thin, the water will disappear in a matter of a couple of minutes. And my regret, whatever, we actually lost a print because I, I peeled it off not carefully with the hair there, but uh, whatever. There we have it. I think we can finish with that today. Thanks to John, John Becker here for the idea to do this last uh, on the stream the other day. I wouldn't have thought of this myself. It, the print this big, this is a challenge, as we can see. This is a challenge. Good morning, Wakana san. How you doing? Good. Family okay? Yes. All right, good, good. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Let's get, we've got a long, long Saturday coming up now in the shop. Thanks for hanging around to see, to see this experiment. And in the next, on Monday, I will show you the dried print, the one that we have this morning. What does a low light going through it look like? I don't really know. How can we, how can we see, you know? It's hard, it's hard to... No, it's hard to say. That's the back side. Whatever, whatever, whatever. There we have it. Thank you very much, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Let's put the outside camera up. The gang's all here. Who is it? Oh, it's Nakazawa-san. So today's staff in the shop, it's Nakazawa-san and Sadako and Wakana-chan. And it's raining again. Okay, signing off. Thank you very much. See you in a few days. Bye for now.